we have an exciting discussion lined up today on 3D workflows in After Effects and Substance. My name is Eliza Tan, Product Ecosystem Manager for Adobe's Video and Audio Products. My name's Wes. Uh, I work on the Substance team. Hi, everyone. I'm Victoria Nice. I'm Principal Product Manager for After Effects. First thing I'm going to do is just start with Substance 3D Assets. That's uh, basically where I start all my projects. I'm just going to jump in here and do a search. So for example, I want to start off with just a mesh and I could download this FBX. Then we're going to start by jumping right into Cinema 4D. So here's the phone. We have this uh, smartphone cover here. So here you'll see on this asset, I have these three joints and we'll grab hold of the actual skin. So I'm going to jump over here to my character and look at the weight manager and see like the first root here. Uh, everything is a solid weight for each area of where I want to bend the case around the phone. You can see that I've just set a really standard weight. It was super easy to do. I made a null here. And on this null, I set up a couple of user channels. So here's what these user channels look like. Basically some float sliders that I can use for animation and then set like a limit to the minimum and maximum for each one of these folds. And you can see here, I can just start to bend uh, the case around to create like a fold. And I want to show you uh, what I ended up putting together once I had my rig done. I have a couple of these default animation states of the case. So at this stage, what I do is I export this over as an FBX so that it could take this into Substance Painter. So this is what it looks like when it comes into Substance Painter. We'll do a quick search for a leather. You can just simply click download and it downloads right here into your assets. And so if I want to apply this, it's a simple matter of just taking the material, drag and drop and place it right on the model. And there we go. I'm going to come over here to my 3D projection. Let's go to eight. You can see because it's a substance material, there's all these parameters that I can change, tweak. If I want to mask this, uh, just like Photoshop, I'm going to use just like a layer mask. I'll grab my little paint tool and my fill object tool. We'll grab our object mode and then I can just click and that just easily selects the little 3D objects that I have here in my scene. Let's put some stitching around on this leather. So I'm gonna start by just creating a paint layer. Let's come over here to my search and we'll start to type in stitch and I'm gonna grab this top stitching tool. Instead of a brush, I'm actually using a pen tool. And just like maybe Photoshop or Illustrator, I can come in and I can just start to plot a couple points here. I just wanna decrease the size on that. So I can just, it's a simple slider here that I'm changing. And of course, this is all non-destructive. So at any time I can come back mm -hmm. here to my curve points and change and adjust things. So I just duplicate the layer. I select the curve. I'm going to jump over here to my material on this one. And I'm going to take that stitch material off. So now I have just a stroke. I just want to use height information. So I'm just going to pull the height value down. And now you'll start to see that what looks like an indention in the surface. And then what I'm going to do is grab a filter, just like I've been doing Photoshop. I'll grab a blur. Let's increase this blur. And now I'm getting this little divot here in the leather. And then if I put my stitch back on, you get a little bit more of that kind of extra puckering around there. So that's what I did for that. Okay, so moving to the next thing. If I look here, I've got an Illustrator graphic. I'm gonna grab my Illustrator document. I just drag it from my desktop, place it right on my 3D model. Now we're just gonna scale this up. I'm gonna rotate it around. So if I want to, I could even jump down here to my file type information. And if I wanna switch my artboards, I can access those artboards directly from with within Substance Painter. And I would just add my mask, grab my fill object tool. This time here, I'm gonna fill based on my UV shell and then click and boom, there we go. That's how quick it was to mask that screen into here. So super, super fast. So what I'm gonna do is go to my export textures and I'm gonna choose to export an SPSAR, which is a substance archive or substance material file. I then jump back over to cinema I just drag and drop it right here into cinema. And so now I could grab this guy and just apply it right here on the case and then just do a real quick render here. So once this is done, I have my animation, everything is set and ready to go. What I would do is just simply go export and I'm gonna export GLTF. And now I have a GLB that's gonna have all the animations available to it. And with that, I turn it over to Victoria because she's gonna take this and start working with it directly in After Effects. And so here I have this in my After Effects timeline, just like any other footage. But if I wanna get to that animation, I now have an option down here in animation options. And one thing you'll notice is this is a 30 second composition, but as soon as I click one of these, it's gonna shorten my clip down to just the piece that has that animation in it. If I hold down option, I could drag this all the way to be 30 seconds long and it's gonna time stretch this whole clip, but it's, it's not skipping from frame to frame because it's actually using the animation data that's built inside this model from cinema. And so I can get that smooth, soft animation. And then and I can animate on top of that within After Effects. 
I've jumped ahead and I've already done this 3D camera track. I want to put this phone on this desk. Maybe along here, I'll just select a couple of these points. I'm going to right click and say set ground plane and origin. This is going to make this like the zero point of my project. And then I'm going to say create shadow catcher camera and light. Automatically, it's created a 3D camera and any 3D stuff I put in the scene is now going to move with this scene. Here, I'm going to just grab my phone model again. I'm going to hold down shift, parent this to my shadow catcher. I'm also going to switch my light to be an environment light. I could just start rotating this. We can change the color of the shadow directly. I don't have to do any fancy compositing. I can just go down here to my material options and I can grab that color picker and I can grab one of the other shadows in my scene, soften that out a little bit. And I've got something that is already going to look a lot more convincing. I'm going to jump ahead to my next pre-comp. So I've taken Wes's model and I've time remapped one of the animations. It's going to unfold and then it's going to land back on the desk. The screen is actually a separate layer here and it's parented to the phone and it's underneath the glass layer of the phone. So we're getting reflections from the environment light, but we also have the ability to drop in some video clips or anything else that we want. This is the pre-comp. What you need to do to do depth of field is pre-compose your 3D scene. And so I'm gonna jump ahead to my nice little composited version here. And what I've done is made a copy of my pre-comp, this composition here. I've made this copy and I have applied the 3D channel extract effect. And what this effect does is it gives you a depth map where things that are closer to the camera, it's it's going to be bright white and then as it goes further into the distance you'll see that it gets darker. I have my other copy of my pre-comp of my phone. I've applied the camera lens blur effect. That phone depth map layer, I've used that as my blur map. It's really important to choose effects and masks because otherwise it's just going to use the source of that layer. And then pro tip for camera lens blur specifically, you do need to invert the depth map. And what we have is just a nice little very quick promo for a phone case. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Wes and Victoria. Take care, everyone. Thank you.